What's up guys, this is Robots of Fox. Welcome back to a new video. Today is a special day, cause it's a premiere. It's a new video series on this channel. This is back, 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 back. episode one. So in this new video series, we talk about games I finished and already talked about, but there's more content to see, you know? And today we start with the first episode. It's two games today, Marvel Spider-Man and Gravity Rush 2. So I already talked about these two games in other videos. Take the videos out, it's linked. And if you want to see what's now with the DLC of these games, this, these games got more content than the main game, you know? So we're here today to look at the DLC. And quick now, check out my Real Life channel. There are videos dropping every two weeks, just like on this channel. And on the Real Life channel, you get very interesting topics. Yeah, but fuck that, let's go. Let's start with Spider-Man. After a great run with Marvel Spider-Man last year, I was pretty hyped for this DLC package. Yeah, package. Cause there are three DLCs for 10 bucks each and I got all three DLCs for 10 bucks. This is kind of fortunate. Every DLC is linked to a greater storyline after the events of the main game so it's one large story which is really good in my opinion. So they can take some time to tell a great story, one great story and not like five villains with different chapters and all the chapters are like 30 minutes. No, it's one large story and that's great. And the villain of this story is Hammerhead. So I just went into the first DLC called Black Cat and I totally fucked up the fighting. Perfect. It was kind of funny and frustrating at the same time. But I kept going on this DLC with the focus completely on Black Cat. The whole relationship between these two were great. The phone calls between Peter and MJ were great. But the content overall in the first DLC was not great at all. So it's mostly just some random riddles here. It's some boring MJ stuff over there. There are no real highlights, you know. Expect one thing and that's the best scene of the first DLC for me. It's the Black Cat chase scene where you play toe to toe with Black Cat. It's so great. Damn! It's everything I wished when I played Spider-Man since Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 2 back in the day. This is everything I wanted in my life. This is great. So the second DLC, Turf Wars, went to a kind of different direction. There was a little revenge story, which was good. But the whole DLC got no real highlights or lowlights. It's just straight on a middle level all the time. It's not bad. It's good. It's good. Interesting investigation all DLC long. But it has no real highlights and I don't have to say that much about it. So the third DLC, Silver Lining. I guess I keep it short without spoiling you. What the fuck is happening? Great level design, great immersion at all, great cutscenes, the story going to its peak. So I was so excited for the final showdown and it was there. But Spider-Man himself fucks it up so hard. This DLC talks about different countries getting destroyed in war and death and everything. And literally one second after the final boss is beaten, one second after it, Spider-Man drops three jokes back to back. <laughs> and they are horrible, garbage. My whole immersion just broke at this point. I love this DLC storyline, at, but at this point I was like, bro, what is, what is wrong? This is bullshit. <laughs> and damn. I, Ah, it hurts, it hurts. So next to the main plot, there are side activities as well. And every DLC just takes the spot of one main mission, one main mission to introduce you to a side activity. Why you just don't unlock these side activities by default? Why I have to play the storyline to get mentioned in a filler material mission? Hey, there's a set activity. That's kind of bullshit, you know? By the way, they teased the Miles Morello standalone a lot in this DLC. Hey, Peter. 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 A lot. But overall, I didn't expect to get that much good produced content. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's still really good. Is it worth 30 bucks? Nah. Is it worth 10 bucks? Totally. Of course. Buy it. Let's get over to Gravity Rush 2. The Arc of Time, Raven's Choice, is a free DLC for Gravity Rush 2. To close the gap between Gravity Rush 1 and 2, 
there is the Overture animation. These are two small anime episodes, like short movies, who are split into two different points at the story. So if you want to split up the Gravity Rush story, there is a timeline. So it's Gravity Rush, Overture A, The Arc of Time, Overture B, and then Gravity Rush 2. This is the whole Gravity Rush timeline in order. So I wrote it in the description as well and there are links to get access to the content if you're missing something. So just play it in this order and you're fine. Thank me later. It's 2am, I'm cutting this video right now and I lost the footage of my Gravity Rush 2 gameplay. Technically it's gone. And I now I have to use some footage by some YouTube guys. And now I will use the footage of Is Kusanagi made. You don't know anything about this, but I will link you everywhere. Thank you a lot. And now let's go on with the video with not my own footage. Damn, after this insane intro and the badass entrance of Raven, I was so damn ready to get back into the world of Gravity Rush. After the first fight, which was nothing special, but the whole vibe with it, you know? Everything got me the feeling that this could be very nice. There's even a quick tutorial in this first fight where you can fluently switch back into the gameplay loop of Gravity Rush which is very good. After the first fight, we get the task to destroy some machines. Then we get introduced to the gravity shift again. The enemies are the same, the conversations are there. It's good old gravity rush. And it's funny to see Cat as an NPC. Then after some events, the real plot of the story starts and Raven gets thrown back to a point where she's a child and doesn't have any memory of her current self. So the whole DLC is about her past and her deepest connection she got in life which is her adoptive brother. So in this area we collect Raven's memories and the idea is great, but the gameplay got very slowed down. I wanted to experience the story, I want the story to breathe, but some memories are just not necessary cause the content is very obvious and after a great start, which I just told you, this is a very slowed down version so i got a little bit bored over here after that there's an escort mission where i got the same feeling like in the last area it's a little bit too stretched you know and the ai of our companion is kind of crap then we get to the point where i don't want to tell you that much more about this game because i don't want to spoil you the experience i mean it's free go download it go play it but I got to say so it's creative it's interesting it turns up so much in style there are very dope boss fights and I even got a little fury vibe while I played these boss fights and that's amazing so there are some AI fails as well and there is some more gameplay stretching but overall it's a good package again it's for free so if you're a fan of gravity rush you might take a look and if you're a fan of raven you have to take a look. So that's it with back, 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 back. episode 1 and I really like to try new stuff and it was very nice to complete these games I finished. So if you like this video, if you like my work at all, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and then we see us next week on my real life channel. It's getting crazy. <laughs> Or just in two weeks here again. And today I'm just gonna say, Hey Peter! Hey Peter! Hey Peter! Hey Peter! Hey Peter! Hey Peter.